Hi, I'm Dr. David Targan, and welcome to BioDigest. We've all heard of the HIV virus and know of its devastating effects on human health throughout the world. If anything good has come from such a terrible situation, it's the fact that the revolution in the tools and power of biotechnology has enabled scientists to understand and predict the evolution of the virus in ways that were once unthinkable. These developments have allowed for therapeutic breakthroughs that have given millions of people around the world hope to fight HIV. My name is Bill Carter. I live in New York City, Astoria, Queens, and I'm a personal trainer. Bill has been not only a wonderful trainer, he's been a source of inspiration and joy. I'm very lucky. I have a great job. <laughs> I love it. I'm lucky I have a great trainer. <laughs> I was diagnosed with HIV in 1996. I had been getting sick. I told myself that, oh, it's just a cold that just won't go away or it's a flu or something. I'll be fine. He started dropping weight and his face just developed this hollow look and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. It was clear to me that his disease, his HIV, had become full-blown AIDS at that point. HIV is a, called a retrovirus. It infects humans and debilitates them by killing their immune system. The virus, if not treated, kills virtually everyone over a seven to 10 year period. AIDS from HIV knocks out your CD4 T lymphocyte, which is the main orchestrator of your immune system. You die of AIDS not from HIV, you die of AIDS from what HIV causes, which is the death of these CD4 T lymphocytes and decreasing your immune system's ability to fight off infection. In 1981, when the first cases were diagnosed of HIV, virtually everyone died of the disease who got infected. We had very little to offer. And what we've done in the years that have followed have changed this from an acutely fatal disease to one that is a chronic disease, a true paradigm shift in modern medicine. It happened using the molecular biology and the information age revolution. Back in 1996 when I was diagnosed, they started me on a very strong regimen. I was taking a couple of dozen pills two or three times a day. It was just very debilitating having to be on that regimen that they gave me because the drugs were so strong and it made it hard for me to work for any extended period of time. The resistance develops quickly in this organism and can outpace many drugs after they're developed. So you're constantly looking for how you challenge the new resistant virus that comes forward. Tebatec is one of the antiviral companies within Johnson & Johnson concentrating on infectious diseases of huge unmet medical needs. Burco is a diagnostic and personalized medicine company that uses diagnostics and therapeutically based diagnostics to help not only the development of new drugs, but how you follow the epidemic and how you personalize medicine. The most important diagnostic change that I've seen since I've been diagnosed has been they can genotype the virus. The diagnostics for HIV are true biotechnologies that personalize medicine. The diagnostics that we use actually look at every nucleotide, every piece of the DNA and RNA of this virus. We tear it apart piece by piece so we know the whole roadmap of what this virus looks like, what it can fight against, and therefore we can design a rational cocktail of drugs to fight that particular virus. At a certain point, because the virus was so resistant, all the drugs that were on the market did not work anymore. The newer drugs, we're not only looking for more potent, highly resistant drugs, these are drugs that have to be not only efficacious, but safe. We were able to figure out how the virus replicates, and therefore we've designed drugs for the first time to inhibit the replication of the virus. I was lucky enough to be able to benefit from scientists and doctors learning which drugs the virus was resistant to. Biotechnology and the molecular biology revolution allowed us 
to attack this disease and turn it into a chronic disease in parts of the world. If we had this virus come out in 1961 instead of 1981, we wouldn't have had the biotechnology to even isolate the virus. It would still be unknown. It would still have no drugs developed for it because we couldn't even find or evaluate the organism. The new drugs have helped me because I don't have to take so many. It's only eight pills a day compared to, like I said, the 20, 25 that I was taking years ago. And it's just been a much easier, less intrusive way of getting my medication. This is a very different message than 20 years ago. This is a message of great hope, of further uh, developments, but of the potential for a normal lifespan. Tremendous progress has been made in understanding and treating the effects of the HIV virus. But much work is still needed to cope with the virus in the poorer nations of the world. Researchers, using the tools of biotechnology, continue to provide keys to understanding the human immune system that could lead to even better or more easily available therapies for HIV and other life-threatening viruses. For BioDigest, I'm Dr. David Targan.